We are the Mary Idiots and we're live in Dynamo with Greg Rifo. Hello. And uh, we are, have a really wonderful tasting today um, of the lovely uh, six barley wines put out by Dude de Mastery. Is that right? Uh, How do you pronounce it? Almost. Uh, <laughs> oh, I had it right a few and seconds ago. I'm not Flemish, ago. so even if I say it incorrectly, they will forgive me. But we're going to call it D-O-M, as he calls it now and then. Jeff Perrins. And first of all, I want to ask you, Greg, how are you doing today? I'm doing good, like uh, good weather, like fantastic week. So we'll keep, we'll remember that, I think. Uh, at the moment, no, times are a bit difficult, but I think it's for everybody, not not even only like in our hospitality sector, but I think now, like after a year of COVID, everybody struggles. I see like even people that work like from home, they have seen nobody. We at least like can, I mean, I, I basically switched fully from a bar to uh, running a bottle shop. Uh, during the, the COVID times and I see new faces like every day so it's um, socially it's easier I think for uh, me than for for most people that actually work and also, I mean look fine but actually they struggle way more than I do so um, considering the circumstances I think I'm, I'm good yeah, and <laughs> Dynamo is one of our favorite bars. And I should, of course, Thanks. introduce behind the scenes the Beer Idiots, Dieter Prost. Hello. And Hannah, both running, can't you? Uh, both running. Hannah's running the chat. So please, if you have any questions about these six barley wines that were done as a collab with DOM and I Day by Jeff. And uh, just to make you happier, I'm going to make you an honorary member of the Beer Idiots. This is the card. I'm an idiot, VIP, and you're a forever member. Wow. And here you go, man. I'm so glad to have you on board. I'm an idiot as well then, I suppose. Well, yeah, maybe uh, it's a club you don't want to join, right? But uh, there you go. Well, we'll see like what I get as perks as a, as a honorary member. That uh, is to be seen in the next beer festival, like. Yeah, you've got well, entry happy to any of their I'm, beer idiots. I'm happy anyway, thank you. <laughs> and you might become rich with that because it's a kind of a share you know, card. You know, it's like the Bitcoin, right? So it's... Uh... Yeah, exactly. And just to mention, two of our other idiots are right now locked in a cemetery. I won't say where. They overstayed and they got locked in. So that's how idiotic we are. We may be idiots, but we're not stupid. That famous <laughs> saying from Dieter. So let's just get a little history and then you can tell us what uh, barley wines. The history is that Jeff uh, uh, from DOM... Uh, was feeling a, a little bit depressed uh, just with COVID earlier last late last year and said, you know, I have so much time on my hand and what's the thing that brewers always want to do but never have the time to do and that's collabs. And he said, let me do some collabs. And so he called uh, six of his friends and we're going to go through all of these. And together they decided to put together a six pack because he has these six packs, a unique six pack, never been done before, collabs with six different brewers so over November and December, he invited them one at a time. First of all, they all came up with six different recipes. He was very surprised because they had originally, he said, let's do collabs. And they said, well, you know barley wine so well, Jeff. Let's do barley wines. And so that became the theme. And uh, he was really surprised at the different recipes that came up. So we're going to drink through these six. They were all released today, April Fool's Day. So we're right on time. So maybe you already got, we're one of the lucky ones to get one of the, uh, I think it's, was it 20,000 or 10,000 packs that were released today? He only had 100 left at his place. I assume they were sold out quite fast. And barley wines are kind of unusual, Greg. Uh, what's a barley wine and why are they unusual to the Belgian? Um, well, barley wine, like I, I, I... I'm, I don't like to over talk about styles because like there is part of that's a bit legendary in what they are the classical is IPA for example people come with like all stories and so on so it's always like a bit uh, a bit difficult to talk like about origins and I don't want to show like that I'm more knowledgeable than them that I actually am so um, just give us kind of a so basically a barley wine is really 
black um, English style originally and they are supposed to be quite um, mold forward and, and quite thick it should be like a kind of end of year uh, enjoyable beer if you look like at historical uh, barley wines like I think like uh, I remember one that made by RVs in um, south of England lovely brewery from the 19th century barley wine there would be like seven eight oh, percent amber, amber ale um, and yeah but that was a strong beer remember they were drinking really three four five percent uh, beers nowadays it has switched to um, yeah very strong stuff like 11 12 13 maybe 14 percent beers so I suppose the six beers that we are gonna drink today are probably gonna be less drinkable in a row uh, than than the old in English ones. Uh, but um, we're just tasting. We'll see. We'll, we'll see. see. We'll we'll see. So if we if we don't finish glasses, uh, please forgive us. It's not because it's bad. It's just because we have six to drink. Um, but yeah, roughly that's what you can say. Then you have like. American barley wines, like it's a subcategory that's basically more uh, strongly hopped, so that you still have the, the hopness. Yeah. There's a difference in, um, yeah, the American style. It's not rare that style. you would go above 100 AB, uh, IBU on the American barley wines, but um, I don't know, I don't know which ones we have today, but I suppose they are, we will not have that because it's a bit like slightly old fashioned, actually, that uh, substar. Nowadays, you really have like, barley wines that are almost always uh, barrel aged because you kind of you, you kind of like these kind of a bit oxidized barrels like uh, cognac and, and so on that would really give a bit of nuttiness um, to the to the barley wine that would really like add something so um, that's what you, you see most of the time nowadays it's it's barrel aged barley wines well let's start with the first one from Brasserie Min uh, which we well know, Philip Mean. He's been interviewed. First, pour it, and then we'll put the. Uh, this one. Yes. Yeah. And you don't have to pour it all. I'm sure they would love to taste some as well, since they're so rare. Um, and uh, Brasserie Min is in Ballonville. He's just moved into a, well, not just so the last two years. This beautiful brewery. Um, and this one is a uh, called a brownish ale. It was at. Uh, 20.5 uh, uh, P. There we go. And uh, each brewery, when you're talking about barrel age, there's actually a part two to this because uh, what they did, uh, you know, uh, DOM is a 50 hectoliters thing. So they brewed 50 hectoliters and basically they split it. Half has gone into the barrels at each brewery. Half has gone into the barrels at each brewery, so okay. there's a part two where you're going to get this in barrel uh, age. See, that's what I said. So it's it's quite. Uh, I'm quite happy because it's really it gives usually good results and it usually ages well. So well, let's have a taste of this. And yeah, I'm quite excited actually. Hmm. It it's like, gonna have like some hops aroma. Oh, like Jesus Christ! It's, it's because it's probably still like quite fresh. Turned it down. And you can feel, yeah, the thickness. Yeah, but it still has like uh, a nice bitterness to it. I'm, yeah. I'm a bit uh, over surprised. It's, it's, um, it's quite it's thick but not um, not too sweet no that's it has, um, yeah it's, it's it's still quite bitter actually for for what what I expect of as a barley wine but it's more the American style would you say no, or no 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 still not he calls this a brownish ale um, I could drink like for sure a full bottle of that. Yeah. So. And what's the percentage uh, on it? I, I mean, only nine point six. Only actually. nine point six. It's a mean edition, uh, malted oats and El Dorado and Chinook hops. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. No, that's, that's, um, that's quite good. It's probably right. quite one of the lighter ones we're going to discover because this is a discovery for us as well. We haven't taste, pre tasted these. I haven't, we haven't opened it. We I haven't cheated uh, on anything. Don't worry. So, um, do you have these for sale? Did you manage to get corrals? No, them? actually, I haven't. Uh, I haven't. I don't have them for sale. I actually don't even know where you can get them. So you can get them at uh, Brew and Co. And uh, okay, yeah. Well, you know the one that took over the brewery. And uh, we have an interview with Philippe on our site from two or three years ago. I think it was Leuven Innovation. Okay. And tell us about Swaf, uh, Greg, uh, Dynamo, uh, Multitax, wow. and uh, so those that Barbatur. I suppose most of the of the viewers are familiar with uh, with Swaf, uh, but if you know nothing about it, so it's basically a festival that we started um, five years ago. Now I'm a bit lost with lack with the cancellations and COVID and yeah. stuff. But it should it was five years ago. Oh. It should have been the fifth edition this year, so it yeah. was four years ago because it was in May. Um, so four years ago, we did that with uh, Seth from Barboteur and, uh, and, and Antoine one. from Multitax. Um, Barboteur already did one, uh, Seth, the, the, the year before with, um, with um, uh, JT from uh, from uh, Piton that yeah. we sometimes forget. Yeah. Um, but he's there is still like doing a great job as well on the scene. So this should be normally the the fifth edition uh, this year, but last year was cancelled. I have no information scoop like about the festival. So sorry, I forgot to say. So it's a beer festival with roughly 15, 20 breweries that we organize with three people and. We try to keep it as uh, accessible as possible, not That's too what I love about it. and like it's just more a party with good beer. It's one of my most relaxed I would say festivals. Geek, geek beers for non-geek people. We try to keep it as accessible as possible, and usually it works quite well. It's a, it's a, it's a cool party, I think. Um, so yeah, this year probably like I suppose it will be cancelled again. Um, here it's like I'm, I haven't discussed it recently with Seb and Antoine, but on my side, I think we. I don't want to be like it needs to be a party. That was the thing at the start, and if we have too strong rules, we'll we'll spend so much time thinking how oh, can we fix the COVID rules in the thing, and we'll lose the kind that's of fair. fun element. So probably it will not happen this year. Oh, that's a shame. Yeah, but on the other side, also we have to. I mean, our main focus will be to restart or or bars. Yeah. So that will be quite a quite a lot of work as well. So we have to also focus on our main business. Swaf is just basically for fun. Yeah. We we don't do that for any money, uh, and it clearly takes like quite a lot of time. So yeah, we have to see like also like that part that it's. Uh, I don't want to be constrained and, and we could have also like negative press if like things don't go as it should. So oh, well. let, let's keep it like for, for next year in good conditions rather than try to fix something. But again, if it happens and we still do something, it's it's possible as well. I just yeah, took yeah. my personal opinion. Well, here, let's not, keep uh, upbeat about you know, this kind of disclaimers you usually give yeah, like yeah. that it represents the author's view and not the institution one. Then. Yeah, yeah. So, what are you? Is it warming you up? This first beer. By yeah, Philippe? actually, it's. Uh, I think Philip probably uh, had in mind that he, he would barrel age this one, so uh -huh. it needed to be quite uh, drinkable and and not neutral, but not with not too powerful accents to it, because. I think he's, he has, in his opinion, he's going to try to replicate something on his, um, with my dear, if you have had the opportunity already to try, is um, with my dear, the, for example, the Polini Mourache Barrel Age, it's fantastic. If you haven't tried that, I would advise you to try. Yeah, Philip um, is an amazing brewer. Yeah, he makes really nice, actually, Barrel Age body wine. So more on the drier side, and you can 
feel that here it's thick, but it's not too thick. So um, it has. Um, I think it's gonna be like quite interesting in uh, in the barrel. I think that's the the barrel aged version will be really like something. And me, I, I I don't mind thick. I like full mouth feel on. on, on yeah, but you don't want like overly thick so uh -huh. it's you need to find the right balance yeah like, if it's too thick i enjoy for a taster but i would not drink a full bottle uh-huh so it's here i think the idea behind it is that it needs to keep some drinkability if we yeah can and probably it's a good introduction to barley wines uh, this kind of yeah uh, for sure it's like lighter it's, it's yeah uh, drinkable it's, it's for sure so and do you, what kind of barley wines do you like? Or do you carry them here? Or, uh, is there a big demand? Because that's the big thing. A lot of people are not into it. They hear barley wine and they think, okay, it's, it's called that because of the high percentage. They kind of shy away from them because it's, it's kind of a difficult style. So most people basically want to drink either they, they are basically like sour fans and they want to drink like good and whatever or they tend to be more like on the hoppy side and then they want to kind of either like the revival traditional IP like type kernel style or they want to go for the haziest they can find um, but then there isn't really like a barley wine fine it's it, it kind of blends with the imperial stout fan um, but there is more demand for imperial stout. Um, there is more possibility, I think, like the, the, the palette of taste that you can achieve in an imperial stout is pretty wider than in a barley wine. And so there is also less, uh, so there is less demand, but there is also less example of good barley wines by breweries because it will not sell well. So you see less and less of this style. It's kind of a disappearing style. Oh, really? Except like on, on kind of niche barley stuff, but it's quite rare that you see like... I, I don't have an example of um, a kind of commercial, uh, big production barley. Oh yeah, they don't make them because they're no. expensive to make, as Jeff was telling me. Um, and there's, there's a slight difficulty in getting the Plato right so that they can get yeah, the Yeah, that is true as well. So, but it's, I really think there is also like a, a demand, uh, a demand issue there, so. Well, let's try the next one, which is T-Vizette. And uh, this one, yes, there's a question. Well, there's not actually a question, but there's a lot of- uh, It's not my son again, I hope. No, no, <laughs> there's a lot of people active in the chat. Uh, actually, Lisbeth, uh, oh, yes. the wife of, uh, the brewer? Yes, Jeff. that's from uh, Totem, right? She also or, has or, some information. Yes. So she was telling uh, each beer is brewed in a 10 hectoliters and indeed 5 hectolit hectoliters is for these limited packs and the other 5 hectoliters went to the 6 breweries for part 2 packaging. Yeah. aging. Uh, she also... So yeah. If you do the math, there is no 10,000 packs, but uh, yeah. maybe max 1,300. Yeah, maybe forget. something closer to that. <laughs> uh, she actually said it was uh, limited to, to two, uh, 1,200. 1,200. Yeah, 1,200. I got it completely <laughs> wrong. 800 Belgium, I'm, 400 the Netherlands. Yes, something like that. Uh, yeah. It's true that like the, the Dutch love strong, strong. Shall we go to the then? As yeah, sorry, sorry. sorry I mean, and is, any, uh, is there any... Uh, other questions? That's thank you very much, Elizabeth, for that, and thanks for watching. Like well, he there's, pours and then he puts it in. There's a lot of hellos as well. Okay, great. From who? Where are so, they from? So we got Mickey, Mikheo. And got, tell us where you're from. We, yeah. we have Ra Randep. I think that's on Dutch. Okay, <laughs> hello, hello out there. <laughs> we have Steph van der Vel. Hello. Yes. Uh, we also have uh, Chris the Meester who is watching. Excellent. Hey, hey Chris. Chris. So yeah, there's uh, a lot of people active. But please tell us where you're from. And whether you have, and whether you have managed to get. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good. And whether you have these beers on hand, and whether you're drinking them with us, and what you think about them too. Let us know. 
And do you carry uh, barley wines here any now and then? I guess, as you said, yeah, it's difficult to sell. It's, it's difficult to sell, but it's also difficult to get good ones because, as I said, breweries tend not to make them. So, yeah, a few, I would say something like 20 by the bottle. Okay. And Teva Z is, a, of course, a craft brewer in Enzigem. This one uh, is brewed with rye uh, with four kilos of Sarashi ale in the whirlpool, is how they describe it. And of course, Teva Z is Cohen Van Lechter and Alex Lippens, uh, the two amazing brewers who put out quite a bit. And of course, you carry a few now and then. And, uh, they make really great stuff. I think the, the initial started on the Art Brand style. Yes. And then they expanded. So they were very well known for the, I mean, to revive a style that was almost dead, basically. Yeah. The Art Brand. And, and now they've expanded outside of that because, I don't know, but I suppose it's difficult to be so focused on a very niche product because, I mean, uh, not everybody is drinking out but it's still quite sour so but this uh this beer looks uh, it smells really like and it's like, really like actually like quite hoppy i think they started in 2011 with their brewing Again, like a quite light uh, barley wine for a barley wine, I think, and, and more very, not dry, but slightly dry ish for a, a, a dry. barley wine. Yes. Um, quite hoppy. So I suspect you must have done the selection that we only drink at the moment the, <laughs> the, 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 the hoppy ones. No, this is just, just random. Super, you could keep the super thick ones for later on. Yes, that's uh, what I did. So I actually uh, thought about it. No. <laughs> you said you are a beer idiot, but you seem to have worked your stuff. <laughs> this is actually delicious. Both have been delicious um, so far. What's the percentage on this? Uh, it's 9.1. Okay, so they're staying around the and nines. I, I think this is a bit, it's, uh, yeah, it's. I love it. So again, very drinkable. Yes. I mean, this is a really accessible these two, I would say. Yeah, it reminds me like. And the flavors are so flowering, eh? What does it remind you of? No, it reminds me the, um, it's not the same, oh, I'm not comparing, but a few years, the first one of the first body wines, Belgian body wines that I drank was the one from saint Hélène that they called Ceci n'est pas un barley wine. Hmm. And I think because he pretends it's not a barley wine, it's like 9.5%, something like that. It was also quite uh, dry at the time. Um, and, and it really aged well because these are the type of beers when they get a bit oxidized, mm -hmm. you kind of have this, um, it adds a bit to the, to the beer, right? Uh -huh. So you kind of have a bit of, of this nuttiness that that's, you find that cool in, that fit well in the style. Because so, when a normal beer is oxidized, it's no, awful. It's, yeah, you just kind of have to almost toss it. Yeah, so basically, that's why brewers usually now put on their beers, please drink fresh. It's, uh, I, I noticed, I didn't know why, but in Russia, the, the, you have to put the, the, the packaging dates on. It's not the best before date, ah. but it's the packaging dates. And I kind of feel it's more honest towards the, the beer drinker because that you can make your own opinion on yeah. whether the beer is still like okay to drink or not. We sometimes receive barley ones with the best before date of four months and I think always it makes like no sense. So why? Because they can hang on yeah, longer? Yeah, yeah, much, much longer, much longer. It's like one of the most interesting start to age. Ah, really? Wow. That's good to know. And so could people, for example, if they buy barley wines, they can put them aside like Gerzes, Lambics, well, uh, Stouts? The, the barley wine needs to be a good one to start ah, right, right? Uh -huh. Don't think that you're going to make something great out of um, a bad barley wine. Um, but um, beers like these ones, like um, they should age well also because they are quite like hoppy. So meant hoppy but there's no dry hopping like for example here that as you said they they put the hops in the whirlpool yeah 
I think that, I mean, when you have like some dry hopping, usually it fades quite fast. Whirlpool hopping tend to be to, to, stay, to, to, to stay better, to age better. I'm not fully a specialist. I'm not a brewer myself. I've home brewed a bit, but so I don't want to talk shit, but it should age better than if you dry hop them. So, but again, nice, um, nice, quite bitterness. It's slight, like, I think you can wait a bit. I have a slight hop burn actually, but very, very slight. But that should like disappear like quite fast. So, and where do you feel the hop burn? How can you tell Just what a hop burn is? Like, a hop burn is when it feels like it's a bit burning at the back of your, of your, uh, of your basically mouth. Um, the back of the yeah. tongue kind of thing. But it's very, very, I mean, it's, it's minimal. It's like, some some very hoppy beers like you drink them and you feel like there is just too much hops. It's and sometimes just like burning. That's why it's called a hop burn when it's too much and it's too young. So then it means probably you need to let it. Uh, it I mean, you put the beer aside and you you let it age a bit. So that it's that slow down. Some people like hop burn. I think it's it's the flow in a beer that um, yeah they like the back of the. I mean, the flow, it, it goes with time, so it's just that the beer is too long. Yeah. But here it's like minimal, so... The hop heads will like it. <laughs> or they pretend they like it, that I don't know. All right, so you like this one? Yeah, it's... And you um, like the... Yeah, till now, I could drink a full one of both, so it's... Um, yeah. <laughs> Well, let's not do that tonight, or else we'll be yeah, falling yeah, off I before. Try, I try to, to, to be composed. So. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I'll keep you on your chair. Don't worry. We're good at that. Let's go to the next one, which is a completely unknown brewery to me, and I just discovered it through Jeff, and I think Jeff's going to introduce. And that was one of his, uh, and maybe you can pronounce the name for me, because it's, uh, you know, being... Uh, Again, I'm not name. Flemish, uh, but it should be uh, Tov Brav Rijk. I... Everybody, the other two idiots who are Flemish say, yep, that's so, pretty good. Good. That's pretty good, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even attempt, guys. So. Wow, what? you're really trying to kill me here. Leave some for these idiots. Wow, and they're all the... Uh, and usually I thought, uh, barley wines, usually this color, I know color really doesn't really matter, but it's, you know, in a sense of taste and smell, but... You know, I've, I've drink, drunk barley wines that are a lot darker, I think, or more... Um, yeah, they can be darker. I mean, there is no... Color can, thing. No, well, it's usually like, it can go too much darker from this to much darker. Usually, like, if you put a lot of mold, you'll still end up with a color like a golden color. Yeah, and I love the color of those. But, Maybe it's because I've always just downed my barley wines before. Again, it's a it's a style that is gives quite wide possibilities. So I don't know the BJCP like the, for the the competition, the contest of the best blah blah blah. But I suppose the the, the criteria are quite broad. Yeah. For it's just in a broad style. thing called strong ales. Well, while you're tasting this, let me uh, tell you because this is unusual. Uh, this brewery is run by Jeff Gotland. Uh, in fact, uh, Jeff told me uh, that, uh, in fact, he didn't originally receive a license for his brewery, so he dug it out in his garden or backyard, and he's got a basement, and he calls it uh, not a sort of a basement, a kind of a, a cavern or something. And this one is done with uh, uh, spelt, peated malt, and double yeast. They said they just, he learned from, and this is one of the things Jeff says about collaborations, and he wished wishes Belgians would do it more, uh, like in the Americans, where they learn from each other. Higher yet, they said that they use the yeast that received the final gravity of zero. It just ate up all the sugar, which is very unusual, because he says he doesn't want barley malts to be totally dry. But Jeff has this technique in which it doesn't feel dry. So I'm curious to feel how you do that. How do you do this? Okay. Yeah? Well, let's see. Let's see. And this brewery is based in Beerzel. I didn't know there was another uh, town in uh, Belgium because we know Beerzel, which is where all the uh, Gers and Lambic brewers and blenders are. But this is Beerzel, a town. 
<laughs> What's the percentage on here? I haven't tried. Oh, 10. It's We're moving 10, up. And it's 10.4. <laughs> I knew you did a great job. Uh, I knew you studied the stuff. No, uh, <laughs> this is really random. It's not random at all. I know you like, uh, no, it's probably, yeah. It's, <laughs> but it's true. I'm it's glad probably I, random you know what? because I, I really did this on purpose. No, but it's probably random because you would put like, it, this is a clearly a peated um, uh, barley wine. Mm -hmm. So you would tend to put that layer in the yeah. tasting, right. the, the peated one. So I'm not surprised that, I mean, it's good we start with the more hoppy ones, I would yeah. say. I would put like the peated ones a bit further because it's a quite powerful taste. Um, but that's, that also looks to me to have a good potential in, mm. in, a, in a barrel. You can wow. clearly imagine like they probably are going to put that in a Isla whiskey barrel or something yeah. like that to reinforce that, that peated style. This it's, is incredible. It's something, again, I mean, you are in a niche, a bar running wine, yeah. a niche, and then you end up with the niche in the niche, which is a peated barley wine. Um, that is, uh, is, yeah, it's it's something I, I quite like from time yeah. to time, but I, I don't even have, like, on top of my mind, a commercial example of a peated barley wine because it's a bit... Uh, it's a bit niche, but it's good. It's um, the the peat is not over powerful um, and overpowering the thing. I, I think. Yeah. So I really think this is in, in my opinion at least. Still, no, it's like pretty good barley wines, especially yeah. like given that they are young. Yeah. I think it's. And just to bring it down, where he said he just used the yeast to just like. As dryness. For, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that is true. You can you can feel it's pretty dry and it's. But at the same time, I don't find that incredibly dry. Yeah, because they use the technique. I mean, he was if saying. you hadn't told me, yeah, I wouldn't basically find it much drier than the the second one, the one with Verzette, for example. I don't know what you think. No, no, no. I um, think I think this is what was unusual a uh, discovery where Jeff said he really learned from it, his friend. It Jeff. might the, yeah. the problem with that maybe it's it might um, it, it, it the risk of, of infection I think in a barrel yeah uh, later on on the second part might be a bit higher okay um, so you must have a technique to prevent that or something I don't know I'm, again I'm not a brewer so I don't want to talk shit so. <laughs> uh, that's we might be at the end of this. But I think yeah. uh, there might be more risk of the, the barrel not giving good results. Okay. Uh, well, if Jeff is out yeah. there, let us know. Um, who else is uh, out there? Are people uh, enjoying some of these beers? Did anybody manage to get yeah, some of them? Well, actually, some uh, some people were complimenting uh, Greg on uh, his pronunciation of Tovbroereke. So it was... <laughs> so you, you, did, you did great. <laughs> <laughs> At Not least bad, I, get, man. I get a brody point too. Like. Yeah, I don't get any. No. I wouldn't even it's try. Fine. I wouldn't even try. Yeah. <laughs> My French is worse, you know. <laughs> and I'm married to a French teacher. Wow, that's good for you. You then you don't need to speak French, you have a teacher, so No no no, I do need to speak French. But here we go. And and this is a guy who his quote on the brewery, just so that we know something, he calls it the soul of the past. And he actually uses an open wood fire when he's brewing. Okay. And uh, I would love to interview him. I put out a little email to him uh, today, just to go visit and try and interview him. Because uh, That's interesting it's a interesting discovery. There are not many uh, using like a wood fire. Why not? And apparently he's been brewing for a long time. Must have under the recycled and old kit, I suppose. Ah, uh, there look to be a question. Yes. Oh, Je Jeff is saying uh, cheers. Cheers, ah, Jeff. Which yeah, Jeff? Cheers. Which Jeff? Jeff from a dub. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Jeff. Glad you could join us. Okay, so now we can. We really need to be serious and not say stupid things. Um, well, he'll correct us, which is good. That's true. Yeah, that's good. If you only said cheers. 
I think we are we're, fine. We're tomorrow. doing fine. We're doing fine. So you look ready to go on to the next one. But yeah, I haven't finished any glasses, but uh, it's because I know we still have three to go. Yeah, I'm later keeping on. them here. I would love to continue on this. Yeah, on the so. side on my side. As yeah, well. yeah. And I and see the, the other two side. idiots are tasting okay. them. What's your opinion so far? Pretty good. Yeah, we just tasted the brasserie minute. Yeah, oh, yeah. It's good. It's, it's and now we go to Alvin. Ah, uh, yes. With Glen Castellan. And this one has supposedly fig leaves and Palo Santo wood. And Palo Santo is a holy wood uh, from South America, known in South America, used mainly as medicinal. Here's a brownie one. <laughs> Yes, and this you can see is a different color, and they're going to show you that. It's mainly in Peru and Ecuador, this wood, but uh, it's found uh, throughout something. And of course, Alvin is uh, from the town of Mon. It's known for its, well, you can tell us, and uh, known for its really important beers here, beer, beer style in Belgium. Um, they are basically. Uh I think Glenn would call it a Flemish sours, if I'm correct. Yeah. Um, it's fun because now, like maybe viewers will disagree, but I think the most interesting style that he actually makes used to be his barley wine, the Cuvée d'Herpin, the barrel age one. I think he doesn't make them anymore. So if Glenn, you come on this video, I'm still waiting on that uh, <laughs> Pedro Jimenez barrel aged uh, body oh, wine, yeah, uh, the Cuvée d'Herpigny. Uh, you, I told you like years ago, it was your best beer, but you don't make it anymore. And I'm a bit sad, but literally now, uh, seriously speaking, uh, he was making fantastic body wines uh, when they were barrel aged because he, they were quite dry, a bit funky, and, and, and their barrel was really giving like something. They were mean mates also, like uh, Bali wants a bit in the style that I very much like. It's You don't find them uh, anymore because uh, the craft scene, again, as I said, tends to make very thick and rich and uh, Bali wines that are barrel aged and where you really feel like the barrel like a lot. Um, and they tend to be sweet bombs. Well, I found this barley one very drinkable, the barley ones. But um, when did he stop making it? I don't know. Maybe he'll tell us that he actually still makes them. But, <laughs> uh, Keeps them to I himself. Haven't seen, uh, I haven't seen it in a while. Uh, and so, maybe yeah. he's made one here. Maybe compare so, this to this. So actually, it. when you told me I Vin was in the in the thing, I was thinking mm, maybe we'll get like a kind of. Cuvée d'Herpigny uh, style beer that's gonna be barrel aged, then uh, we'll all be happy. So, um, or else he's moved we'll on. See, no, but yes, yes, he has worked a lot uh, on uh, on this quad, so the Cuvée de Mortagne uh, and the barrel aged uh, Cuvée de Mortagne, so the Land Van Mortagne the quad and the barrel aged one, the Cuvée of the Van Mortagne, uh, Cuvée de Mortagne, sorry. And they are quite interesting, but I tend to prefer the Cuvée d'Herpigny. It, it has something a bit more wild to it. That um, And he's muff. known for his wild yeast. So. so he's known for his muffins, yeast, and of, Marcus, I mean, people yeah. probably know Wild West, Cuvée Sophie, and, and the other beers like that. But I um, I really love, actually, the, the Cuvée d'Herpigny. I used to love it. You hear that, Glenn? He said it at least six times. So you yeah. better do it, man. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's try this out because maybe he'll blow your mind off with this so one. So Palo Santo should be quite, it's quite powerful uh, wood. Normally. Yes. I think the first one that I actually drank with Palo Santo was one beer made by uh, Totem that we'll drink ah, later on. Yeah. I don't remember the names because like they are all like Nordic uh, names that um, I can't pronounce personally. But uh, that was a quite. I remember the first beer I drank with Palo Santo was from Totem. It was oh. quite nice. And what was amazing that Jeff uh, was able to run around and find all these ingredients for the uh, six I don't know, collabs. I don't know what fig uh, leaves should taste. I've never come through a fig tree and if I did uh, it would not cross my mind to eat the leaves of it mm -hmm. um, 
I know basically only beer that was fake that I we mean, that's commercial is the Blogi de Darbist, but as they say, it should not really taste like fig because they use fig juice uh -huh. and it's basically we ferment it in, in the bottle, so it gives something, but you don't know what. And that's what the brewery looks for. Um, here, I clearly don't have any fig taste. Uh, there is something, but I don't know what. And the Palo Santo is very delicate. I'm, yeah. I don't find it's, uh, it's too powerful because it's like tonka beans, they tend to to kill the beer when they are overpowering. And we're going to try some tonka beans at the end. What percentage so, is this one? And can we feel it? It's still it? like only 9.6. Uh, okay. So this is not a beer that's going to end up in the Cuvée d'Arpigny because Cuvée d'Arpigny <laughs> is 13%. Wow. Uh, and I don't think the barrel is going to give like the 3.4 missing percents to it. <laughs> unless he cheats and he really take a fresh one like full of juice. but. 3.4 percent to go like it would so be very all alcoholic. very drinkable uh yeah it barley lines. Like, they're not gonna it's knock you out and put so you to bed i started by saying like that barley wines like uh in england tend to be like used to be like around 70 percent and in the end we have like pretty old school uh barley wines still now so i quite like it i don't think actually the the, the thing is pretty barley wine drinkers would have in mind these very thick beers we described yes. before, so they might be disappointed that actually if they drink that because they have something different yeah, in mind. Yeah, they have a different in mind. Um, and, and people that might enjoy that would not even try because they would think, ah, oh, a barley wine again has got to be too sweet. So... Yeah, and these are really not... You don't feel the sugar, no. you, you know... I mean, they're I would not pretend it's a lager, you see. No, it's but still feels something. Yeah. Right? No, these are very, very uh, dangerous, let's say, in another world. Uh, you know, they're... And, and normally they were drunk around Ju January, sorry, March. And so, you know, considered a kind of a winterish kind of beer. But would you drink some of the barley wines in the summer? Because I have, uh, you know, in the past. It's like, I think barley wine, as I said, I mean, Personal question: Would I do it? Well, why not? I mean, maybe like if you have a good night and you end up like you want the final drink, I would not drink that at five p.m. when we say let's just share beer. Yeah. But like when it starts to be dark and and you want just like you know you just want one beer. Yes. Uh, can you have time to enjoy it? That's the perfect start. And what kind of foods, uh, you know, people talk about beer and foods now, like, you know, I used to do the wine thing and, uh, well, it's kind of, um, you could do a lot of barley wine and chocolate pairings. That could be fun. We could do oh. a session about that. Uh, that could work actually. I mean, you have loads of, uh, um, whiskey and, uh, and and chocolates so especially that, this one I think this would go so really that, well. that you, you can you can do an entire barley wine and chocolate uh, session if you want for fun um, otherwise you might have this at the, the, the end big, of a the meal, big classic right? yeah so the big I mean again something that work I, I my one of my favorite cheese is basically the the stilton and the stilton so uh -huh. the blue cheese and that works beautifully with um, with this type of beer. Oh, I love my Stilton. So yeah, so that's what if you would offer me. But you know, normally, as I said, they are pretty rich. The the barley wines, so you want something that's as powerful. Pretty as powerful. So chocolate, I said, like you kind of can be quite powerful as well. And and yeah, oh, I can imagine the creaminess a of a Stilton. Yeah. Well, with Brexit, it's a bit tricky to get Marina some Poise, at the moment, maybe. but... Um, well, we do try an Poise, uh, which is powerful. What about a yeah. Belgian cheese? What kind of... A Belgian cheese that I would have with that? Well, you can always try air. I've never tried air with uh, with a barley wine, but I'm, I'm sure it works. Uh, other Belgian cheese... There are actually not so many uh, Belgian cheeses. Uh, that are uh, super interesting for these type of okay. beers, I think. 
I mean, Belgian style. Yeah. You can have fantastic cheese made by Belgians. But, yes, uh, they are. But or yeah, I think it maybe Enola would go for. Yeah, and you talked about uh, because of the risk and the lack of demand, uh, the commercial brewers certainly don't go for this style as something that they would risk. Um, how about in Belgium, you know, the family brewers generally, I mean, until the craft brewers came along and started doing all sorts of styles and really exploding our tastes, uh, were any, you know, Belgian family brewers and some of them trying this out and seeing what they could do? But barley wine is very much an English style originally. Uh, you could see a very close style is basically the Belgian quad. Yes. So if you consider like Belgian quad like as the brother of the barley wine, you have like loads of examples. Um, so obviously like the the big one is like Saint Bernardus, for example, that's big quad or West Flayton twelve even. Oh uh, yeah, that's an interesting that's comparison. So so that's possible to find. Like they are quite actually, it's a style that like originally Belgians drink quite a lot. Mm -hmm. I mean, quite a lot. Like well, I yeah. love my quads. Yeah. So it's actually, but if you tell like an average Belgian like about a barley wine, he might not know what it is. And but if you tell about a quad, he will say, yeah, yeah, that's good Belgian stuff. Like we make the best beers in the world. Like <laughs> so. <laughs> So this is kind of, if you wanted to explain that to a Belgian or maybe perhaps somebody around Belgium, it's like a quad, but with a particular sugary taste and maybe a bit higher. Well, quad so represents. Um, again, I don't want to, to talk nonsense, but in my opinion, a quad, like the big difference is I think quad will have some added sugar, like some, again, please, if you were like, think I, I say stupid stuff, it's possible. They will get but you. I'm not, I'm Don't not be like afraid. a specialist be of be the quad style. <laughs> so, but it, in my opinion, I think they, because they want to keep some drinkability, and they would add a bit of sugar to increase the level of alcohol, but also you would have like a more, I mean, these typical uh, Belgian nose to it, you know, like full of esters yeah. that you don't necessarily have in, in Bali ones where you really want to have like it's a bit more mold forward. But again, like I don't want to, 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 to say stupid things. So I, I'm not a specialist in the difference between quad and Bali wines. Is anybody uh, calling him stupid? So, See, he sounds afraid. No. So, be afraid. No, but no, I think in years like we always need to be humble and uh, yes, and not pretend that we. I got to learn that. that. There are too many people I think that want to be seen as uh, experts. experts. So we we are all at the end of the day. We should all be just uh, enjoying beer. Like that's all what it is about, right? And I love that attitude. Not to try to. To pretend too much, but anyway. Well, that's why beer idiots exist. Exactly. I like it myself. <laughs> so I'm happy to be like. <laughs> Anything on the chat? So, uh, people in the chat would love to drink uh, barley wine in the summer, uh -huh. but at a slower pace than this. <laughs> uh, certainly in a Belgian, Belgian summer. So, yeah, yeah it's great. Uh, Quilco is saying Greg for president. Again? Yeah. Wow, we got two yeah. presidents. Thank right you, for presidents. And uh, Lisbeth is saying that, uh, is asking, have you tried the uh, Shropshire yellow claw cheese? It's the absolute best. So, Shropshire, Shropshire, actually. Shropshire, sorry. Shropshire. Shropshire. <laughs> <It's>, um, <laughs> this is the barley wine talking. So, uh, <laughs> oh, it's a topic I love, actually, English blue cheeses. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh oh. Yes. So, it's actually uh, originally mm -hmm. uh, all the cheeses that were made in the UK were colored orange when they were for export. Mm -hmm. So, that's why everybody thinks that cheddar is this. Orange, more or less, uh, cheese that you have melting on your Big Mac, but a cheddar is actually not orange. It's mm -hmm. no, it's like a yellow, like any cheese. 
So Shropshire is kind of just a Stilton with some Roku to color it. Um, and I know that it works, it's fun because it's actually distributed in, um, in England by um, the, the distributor. So it's made by one uh, cheese uh, maker, uh, which is Colston Bassett. Mm-hmm. Uh, in the Shropshire region, and the yeah, in the in the Stilton region, and uh, they co- it's represent only five to ten percent to the production, but all of it is exported. So if you go there, you would not see anybody eating Shropshire because it's really an, an export product. But because in pe- in in people's mind, English cheese is is orange. Mm-hmm. Uh, you have that uh, it's it's quite popular, but I know uh, that they they don't offer it like in the domestic markets. Wow! Uh, it's really all for exports, and I think uh, it brings something. It's not like Stilton, so it's a bit different. I agree with that. But I think if you can manage to get a raw milk uh, Stilton, which is basically. Um, it's Stilton by uh, by rules is always um, pasteurized milk, but you can have a cheese called Stichelton, which is the raw milk version of it. They have to change the name because it's not allowed because it's not pasteurized milk. But if you get a good uh, Stichelton, it's absolutely fantastic. Oh my God, you're making so, me hungry. Yeah, but. Cheese. I mean, it's a bit of a roller coaster, the 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 Stichelton, but when so when it's good, it's very good. So yes, that's uh, I think the most and interesting just blue cheese is, is a good expert- Stichelton. And I've just so uncovered uh, an expertise I never knew about you, Greg. No, it's uh, I mean, uh, just English blue cheese. Uh, it's it's fantastic. I, I think I would not be able to turn vegan just. Probably because of that. <laughs> uh, yeah. Are you on your way to vegan? No, no, we don't. Uh, we don't eat meat. We basically barely eat fish uh, at home. But we. I mean, I have no. I, I think it's uh, the future is for uh, for for more vegetarian diet. Yeah. But. Uh, I don't think uh, I'm. I don't want to, to put myself like you can do this. You can't do yeah, that. Yeah, right. You're not a um, one of these uh, pontiffs. I want to keep uh, to keep my options open, basically. Right. But yeah. And 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 in Dynamo, normally you do serve all sorts of foods. We, or do you try and keep it? Are you moving? No more cheese. That? Like we 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 serve cheese. I I'm probably gonna get rid of. Uh, um, uh, meat platters, yeah. Just because actually you don't see the ingredients uh, on uh, on these um, charcuterie and so on. But yeah. if, if you saw, you probably would not eat them. Uh, yes, because that's think, for true. Yeah, because they, they you never usually, want to go into a sausage factory, for example. No, but they, they are usually like not good quality. Like on paper, you would not eat this stuff. But it's because you don't see the ingredients. You heard that, Peter? So <laughs> no. <laughs> But again, probably here, like we are too much on my opinion. No, 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 no. I want to know. This is like I feel uncomfortable. I feel uncomfortable, like with meat platters, because I feel like the quality. You know that basically, it's like eating um, something at the uh, Fritkop. If you if you eat their meat stuff, you know it's really bad, but you don't care. You don't want to know what's in it. You just want. It's exactly the same. Usually, I mean less. Less extreme, but when you get a, a meat platter, I mean, you usually know that in these meat, uh, it's it's nothing good. They've had like loads of chemical stuff, and, and uh, well, yeah. just remember that. And I think you're right. We are kind of moving towards that, and I've become. And I, that's one output of the you know while we're drinking. Maybe we can start the uh, totem. Oh yeah 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 yeah. Which we have is, a job to do here. That's right, and I'm keeping on track where we're talking about that. But I think that's one outcome of of the uh, uh, you know the lockdown is that I've been discovering that too. You know, I've been learning how to eat, relearn because I'm a heavy meat man, and I've been enjoying a lot more. I've actually been growing plants in my house and using them in foods. And we have a question. No, the question, but uh, greetings from Brazil from uh, Doc Melo. All right. All right. And that's somebody that uh, Dieter interviewed live online, a very yeah. 
He's Amazing. a professor in Brazil and he wrote some books on beer cocktails and beer. And he beer cocktails and beer. beer. Excellent. And hopefully he will come the last week of August to Belgium. Normally, if everything goes good with COVID, he will. Well, I'd love to meet him. Come. All right. And here we go. We have something from Totem. And that's Klaus Delert and Lisbeth. Uh, producing some amazing beers. They're known for using Norwegian yeast and hybrid wild yeast. And this one is uh, golden uh, golden oats and Quebec yeast. I hope I'm pronouncing it right. I've, it's a Norwegian yeast. That's I have to say sorry, but I still, after the years, don't know. I think you say Vik. Vik? Okay. I'm, I'm not so sure. We invited, like, here um, <laughs> some brewers from uh, Aiken Teeth, Norwegian guys that specialize in that. Yeah. Uh, and they, they gave a really nice presentation about uh, Vik beers. But <laughs> That's probably I'm, how you I'm not it. fully sure how you pronounce, to be fair. Well, certainly but not the way I pronounce it. I mean, you have, <laughs> as, a, as a French speaker, we say fake, but I think it says Vik or something like that. Vik? But anyway, it's a yeast that's very, that they discovered is really a hybrid yeast of the normal yeast that certainly prospered in Norway and has become very distinct uh, in yeah. terms of the farmhouse breweries there. And, uh, so it's, it's really like kind of the Norwegian saison yeast, if you want. And there is a, it's, it's kind of, you have this tradition in, in Scandinavia of like, sourdough breads right yes where we basically would give like you have like traditions of some people giving their yeast train uh or the for for bread making from generation to generation and it's really the same process it's really farmhouse uh beer making usually like in in wood wood tanks uh wood uh, mash tubs and so on that and that's what they use so it's quite of close to to bread making um, if some people, it's a very interesting topic. If some people are interested in that, uh, there is an author mm -hmm. uh, that's called uh, Garcho, I think Lars Garcho or something. I'm, I'm not sure how you pronounce his name. And he, he researches a lot like all the um, Scandinavian brewing process and from Eastern Europe as well. Uh, very interesting, a very interesting paper that he writes. Uh, I think he has a PDF online, an 80 pager about about all that. That if you're interested in that, I would advise you to read. I'm certainly gonna uh, look at it. Yeah, it's, it's in English. It's, I hope. it's yes. in English. It's in English. Yes, it's very interesting. Uh, I would love him to come once to Brussels. Uh, probably already did. I'm sure he did. But uh, yeah, I would love him to to follow one of his conference here. I know he goes to Pretanomyces in Amsterdam. Oh, you mean the go interesting festival uh, every year. But uh, yeah, so that's something that would be more knowledgeable about, about fake or fake yeast than, than and, uh, another yes. question, I think. So yeah. actually, uh, Jeff told us in the chat, uh, it's pronounced uh, like you spell it in Dutch, so it's kveik. Ah, kveik. hey, kveik. 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 I might have also almost got it. <laughs> <laughs> I said I was not sure, so it's fine. <laughs> Woo -hoo. My first pronunciation. Thank you, Jeff. And uh, yeah, and you, you know, what do you know about Totem? Do you carry their beers? Do you, you know, they're really so a. I think Totem uh, opened their brewery recently, right? So yeah. It was it was brewing a very years. mini. Yeah, but yeah. it was brewing very tiny size yeah. at the time. I think he had expanded. Um, we've had like very minimal uh, amount of his beers, I would say, maybe not enough. Um, I still remind it as the beers you can't pronounce, uh, which is not easy in a bar, especially on a busy night, if like people are, how do you pronounce this? So it's not comfortable. Uh, but uh, yeah, it was interesting. And again, like I remember that, that Palo Santo beer that I, I tried from them was quite yeah. nice. It was first time for me. So and he's a lovely well, guy. They're both, you yeah, know, he shows up at festivals dressed in these costumes and outfits, and they really, you know, have a kind of a backdrop and a theme that's quite fun. You know, he came, he came to Swaf like the second edition, I think. Yeah, if I'm correct. Yeah, it was uh, that quite cool beers. Yeah, that's quite. But cool, I'm, I'm happy that uh, 
the proverbial well, pendant. Well, yeah. tell me what you think of this one with the uh, oats and... It's a bit more fruity, like what you expect from the the cafe keys. I think so. <laughs> <laughs> cafe keys, or oh, I'm not sure. Like sounds like fake uh, keys. I tried my best, like not to destroy the Norwegian <laughs> language, but um, yeah, you expect a bit of fruitiness. That's that's why people like use it. It's also the cafe keys is interesting because it can ferment beer at a high high temperature. It can work at 30 degrees, which is quite weird in, in no, way, no way, I agree. But it's because that they were not uh, cooling, basically, the, the mm -hmm. words. Um, at least not uh, not themselves. They would just let nature happen. Uh, so it's it's quite interesting for that. But it gives like some fruity fruitiness, uh, but from the yeast part, not from the hoppy part, obviously. Um, so yeah, it's and the um, the oats. Yeah, it gives a bit more body. You can yeah, feel it. So you can feel that body. Uh, but at the same time, the 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 the, the fake uh, the fake of that is um, the yeast. Quite, we all love quite, from It's more. quite efficient. It's quite <laughs> efficient. So there's not too much body. It's like still like very drinkable. Till now, I have to say like I'm quite. Uh, Quite impressed by the drinkability of, of uh, all these bottles. Yeah, yeah, I thought we would really struggle to drink six. Yes, question. Uh, yeah, Klaas, Klaas from uh, Totten ah. says it's fermented, uh, fermented is at 40 degrees. Wow. See, I was, uh, yeah, that's the, the, the thing is actually because there, there, there are no way to, um, so basically what we do uh, in to, 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 to cool the be to the word like when it's at 100 degrees after the boil you need to bring it as fast as, as you can to like 20 25 to pitch your yeast and to avoid um, infection but there was in the traditional like Scandinavian way there was no no mean to to cool basically your your word so you had just to wait to give it time it would be slow and and pitching at 30 or 40 degrees is obviously was an advantage because you had to wait like less. Um, so that's why like this yeast is, is also interesting. It works at quite high temperatures. But um, yeah, I kind of not, I mean, 40 degrees, I'm a bit surprised. It's, I find it's quite high. I didn't know it would work. Uh, you could pitch it at that high, but it's good to know. And that's all technique, isn't it? And knowing your stuff. And that's what's amazing about these are all artists. In a yeah, way. yeah. Well, it's good. And I guess uh, in terms of barrel aging, what would you expect from say this one? I don't know. I trust class to to do something. Uh, <laughs> I've actually have no no clue. Like what? Uh, I think uh, one. If you want to keep in the Nordic theme, yeah. Uh, one day uh, I had like a barley wine, or was it a Nipper Stout? I don't remember from Lovic. Mm -hmm. It no, it was oh no no, it was um, a sour barley wine with a blend with our base that was uh, aged in uh, Aquavic barrels. Oh my god! These kind of Nordic uh, yeah, yeah. Nordic alcohol. I've I mean, got some at home. I'm I'm not a, that I'm not a spirit drinker, but it could be fun basically to keep in the team. And I'm not sure that I could get fine barrels. It's tough to hear that, yeah. But maybe he did. Who knows what he's got up his sleeve in six to 18 months. Who knows? Lovely. But at the moment, all the barley, all the barley ones we've drunk are, no, there is no, it's n nothing is too powerful. No. Um, that what percentage you, is this? Uh, 10. 10. 10.3. 10. But I mean, it's the, it, there is no adjunct that would really be so powerful that it would uh, kill any barrel aging potential. So you can really see that you'll have like the second round will be interesting. Yeah. That's, uh, and maybe we'll have to do a second round on this with you. 
Yeah, exactly. I heard you did two with uh, with Ben. So don't be jealous two. now. I'm a bit jealous of Ben. <laughs> I'm a bit jealous of Ben. And Ben, I sorry, I forgot to give you the exclusive membership. I'm gonna mail it to you. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm a bit jealous of him. Well, no. Now we have a theme. We're gonna do the barrel agent thing. Good. All right. Good. If we can get a hold of it, guys. And we'll do it midsummer to see if we can drink barrel aged barley wines midsummer. It's too young. We'll be sweating. We'll be sweating. Expect that. Uh, that but they, I guess they time. might release them at different times. Yeah, I'm exactly. Not sure so, the strategy. Yeah. so you have to come sure with another strategy. idea to, to come with. Uh, well, maybe we collect all six of them when the final one's released. And we wait next up. summer. Well, yeah, at the end of the year, we yeah, drink yeah. it in the winter. Yeah, that's possible as well. With some good blue cheese from England. And then we're celebrating the opening See? and all the festivals. Yeah. Job done. Let's go on to our last one. And, uh, you know, uh, Jeff said, he, you know, he, this is part of the mix. And we're doing something similar called Bell Hicks, where we're encouraging Flemish and Walluna brewers to get together. So Atrium is Paul Younes and Valerie de Bruker. Okay. They're based in Masha Famen, uh, which is a beautiful, beautiful town. Atrium. So off record, uh, off Ahmed record. Said, said that uh, it was his favorite brewery. Ah. So <laughs> it's important to know if you think <laughs> if you think that he's uh, a bit uh, overdoing it. Um, no, his, uh, his opinion is is biased on this one. <laughs> Well, it's their stuff. It's but the onyx, important to know. But the onyx word just blows my mind. It's fine. Yeah, it's, uh, I just bring the disclaimer so that. People <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for that, Greg. <laughs> well, I'm supposed to be an objective. Journalism journal is player. about objectivity, right? <laughs> so. Yes, well, beer drinking, we all have our tastes. Yeah. But I well, love but them all. Right, I must they, say, I, uh, they're, they're quite cool, uh, quite cool beers. Uh, they've also experimented with, uh, because we were talking about uh, Palo Santo, uh, with the, obviously the Onyx that they um, yeah. age with uh, Amboana. Yeah. Um, that was quite cool. Yes. But here, like... And here they use Tonka beans, 22.7 uh, Play-Doh. Um, and that's... Uh, and as you said, and here's the disclaimer, you don't like stuff with Tonka beans. Uh -huh. No, it's not that I don't like uh, Tonka beans. Yes. Yeah, Jeff is actually saying uh, Valerie wanted me to put uh, Tonka beans in the beer for at least a week. Uh huh. So it's oh. not. Uh, so it's not that I don't like Tonka beans. You're wrong here. Yeah? Uh, <laughs> it's just that I feel it to get tends back. to be over powerful. Uh huh. It can like. It, it can like just sometimes when it's too much, you just feel that and that's it right so but well maybe you'll be surprised but i can by by <laughs> by what anna said mm -hmm. makes me think that it might be quite powerful a bit like a disclaimer oh be careful it was quite it's quite quite we, a lot we can uh, we don't know we'll see we'll see so what's the smell mm, like but yeah. but jeff didn't want it uh -huh. ah so it wasn't oh. done see see a controversial thing the end so it didn't happen. Well, he is oh, the. Oh, uh, it's okay. We can smell a bit, but. Hmm. See, that's a very atrium taste. Uh, the fullness. It's it's quite. There's more body to this than uh, to yeah. some of the other. But again. You see, the tonka bean is quite uh, powerful. It's not over powerful, but would you drink two of this? Well, I did drink five. No, no, of this one. Well, I'm just saying, but but it's good you finished with this one. I'm sure you worked your stuff. You checked before. <laughs> you put this at the end. Yeah, I'm really so smart. because it's this is a good nice last beer. But I'm not sure I would drink two of that. Um, I have drunk five onyxes in a row. No, five onyx in a row, but this with the tonka bean. Oh, yeah? yeah? It's... What does the tonka bean taste? Where does that come through? What, what is the tonka bean? How would you Well, I, I, I always feel it's a bit like kind of coconut-ish yeah. uh, taste. Mm. Uh, but just more powerful. I mean, I, I enjoy it, so it's no, yeah, no it's problem. Delicious. I would probably be able to All of them have been delicious, I Yeah, say. it's very nice. Very, very nice stuff. 
a bit more cloudy also this one yeah. compared to the others. Let's the compare it to uh, there was one that was about as dark as this, but yeah, this. The number, I don't know. I think right. I think it was so. the Alvin. But anyway, I, I I don't care about whether it's like. And what percentage did they get? Uh, it's nine point five. Okay, 9.5. so they all were really keeping it down in terms of on the uh, on the decent side. Yeah. Right? So clearly, I think this six pack has been designed to be drunk like straight like one slack after the other one after the other i don't know actually what would you look like yeah. after drinking six barley wines just come the friday night when the bar is open <laughs> <laughs> well i guess this is a nice shareable pack isn't it you might sit down with three friends That's maybe true. four as That's we are true. now and share and, this and still and i don't know if this is designed basically it comes with this as yeah. it was uh, like but hold it up. Yeah. Clearly, this is um, you know we have a park next to the dynamo. It kind of looks like you take your barley wine to to play like some uh, some petanque in the park with <laughs> the beers, and it's uh, it will not break. Yeah, that's a so wonderful six pack. Uh, that just it's a, just summer, it's a summertime six pack. Uh, this type of like. You would take it out in the park, but yes, seriously, yes, yes. <laughs> and actually, uh, Jeff told me he designed this a couple of years ago. Um, and the reason that it's black because recycled plastics are the most easy to do in the color black and he made it so that ah, it's so compact recycled and plastic. to sell it to recycle more plastic so that's a bit wonderful. of Jeff's creation recycling a Jeff invention it's wonderful he's an engineer from background eh? so he's an engineer from background and uh, yeah that's incredible I hope uh, it's, it's actually pretty cool if you go to the park with your beers. I find it better than these kind of like, you know, these wine bags that everyone yeah, yeah. carries. So and you can it's, reuse uh, this, right? If you want to, yeah. Yes. So I mean, when you buy this, my God, who gets this? I guess you keep it, Dieter. I got three of them. You can have one, Greg. Oh, what about me? I have not other two. Uh, okay. Uh, it's. You did a bad job, I have to say, because actually it's down numbers. So this is the number 42 out of 1200. Yeah, so it means you haven't checked that. No, like, I didn't um, even see it. This oh, my first time checking. you don't have the limited edition. Can I have a knife? Uh. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's wonderful, Jeff. Uh, and that's amazing invention. And we really appreciate it. And it can be reusable. I would love to take this when I'm traveling, uh, go to a park, go for a walk. Like the guy, other two beer idiots who are stuck in a cemetery. They probably, I hope they're, uh, I hope they're released by now. But it might also be cool. You've never thought about it, but wait yeah. a second. Oh, it's oh my goodness. goodness. It's not bad. Genius. Next time you're going to be a <laughs> jiggle with it. Does it? No, but wait, wait a sec. Next time you go to a beer festival, you can bring that with you. <laughs> and, and you are going to be the, the one that basically brings all the beers for the table. You know, for example, yeah. when, when you are... When yeah. You are yeah. I mean, they, they, they hope to organize, I know, the guys from uh, Big Cell Beer Fest, right? And that festival is so big yeah. that the seating is outside, mm. the breweries are inside. Mm. Honestly, you bring that with you and you, you, you can put all the, the glass for the entire table. Yeah. So it's uh and then we just wait in the sun and bring the glasses back and it's perfect. Uh, that's and you can um, sit on it even. No, I wouldn't Off sit on it. No, I think I'm too fat for that. But no, no, it's, no, uh, no. Well, nah. <laughs> I mean, who thinks this is comfortable to sit on? Like <laughs> seriously, like uh, it's maybe you, but yeah, that's the dealer. I'm statement. not picky. So. Out of these six wonderful beers, and thank you so much, Greg. Do you have a favorite, or do you think they're all in their own style and all very unique? Um, I don't know. I think like a favorite. No, it's a bit difficult. Like it's like like ranking what's the best beer in the world. Yeah, no, no, you'd never do that. That's what I'm saying. I'm not me. able to say that. It's. Um, you can see when the beer is bad, when it has an up exactly. objective flow. But then it really depends on like your mood. So Absolutely. I've enjoyed all six for I, example. Yeah, I would say that the, the first ones I found were more happy, like so maybe like if I'm in the mood like it's it's good to start with them. 
This one, like uh, the and Tom one, is actually and not and those were uh, the uh, the Ming and he was that yeah, the was that one, yeah. So this one is like quite um, quite good to finish with. Um, well, and and some like quite cool, like you would feel like there is potential for for the uh, the barrel age version. So it's a bit difficult. Like I I don't want to. To see no, that. no, no, no. Let's go for I, that. I, that was a loaded question yeah. because I already, it's, my answer was they all have such a uniqueness. It was a brilliant concept. But it's fun because you can kind of still see, uh, even if on top of just the fact that they're all body ones, you can still see like some common points to them, right? Yeah. So, like, especially like on the nose, like. Uh, yeah, so it's no, it's a it was quite an interesting experience, so and I good. think a wonderful pack. And if you're lucky enough to have picked them up, well, here's to you. I think you'd be sure. very lucky. I haven't been able to pick one up, and so, and I think uh, maybe they're already gone. But you know, limited edition, and I think it served its purpose. And I think that was Jeff Sides and all these brewers' ideas was to say, hey, we're still here, we're still hanging on. We're still producing beer. We're still innovating. And this was a way to get everyone noticed. And I think he's picked a wonderful six pack. And yeah. so, Greg, really thank you. Thank you. For this wonderful tasting. And You've really brought people. And thank you for my membership. Uh, you know, well, there's a famous comedian. I think he said, uh, I never want to join a club that uh, wants me to be in the club. So. Ah, so I should bin it. No, <laughs> definitely not. Everybody wants to be an idiot. <laughs> Thank you so much, Greg. And I noticed you finished that, so there you go. See? <laughs> Cheers. And we're going Cheers. to finish off. And thank you very much. Any last comments from people? Not really, but at the beginning, there was someone asking to see all the idiots on the video. So maybe... Yeah, uh, let's go, so let's go, go, let's go, all the idiots, except for the two in the cemetery. <laughs> They're walking in the cemetery. They're We're walking. trying to maintain distance, but I'm uh, usually it's okay. kissing this thing. thing. If you, it's 15 minutes. So yeah, 15 minutes. Yeah. Same bubble. Idiots, unite. Cheers. Thank Cheers. you so much for joining us and see you next time. This is Beer Idiots Live number three. We're going to go for number four soon. We haven't decided. Thanks for joining us and have a great night. And I hope you grab one of these six packs. And thank you, Jeff, and all the other six brewers who put this together. Very special for Belgium. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. Cheers. Cheers. Now we have to press the stop button. Press the stop button. Oops, good. We're going to finish off these brews. Thank you, Greg. Thanks. That's just quite cool. I think so. We're still live, huh? right? Okay. Oh, ready? <laughs> We're still drinking. We think it's, it's cool. It's okay if we say age of things. It's still part of the game. Hey, so. don't knock it all over, man. <laughs> <laughs> Error of line.